This episode from back in the good old days of the podcast was about BDSM. And I gotta say, I found it very educational. Uh, we talked a lot about sexual freedom with our guest Sarah Marie Denny and an anonymous guest who, you know, preferred to remain anonymous because they've got a corporate job and other things that they just didn't want to bring attention to. And hey, we respect that here. Don't mind if I don't. Whatever your thing is, however you feel safe, we got you. Uh, but yeah, it was a really enlightening conversation. Uh, and, you know, I'd like to think that a part of me grew up a bit from it. Okay. Enjoy the episode! Let me down. Welcome to Don't Mind If I Don't. This is the show where I don't like things and people tell me why I'm wrong. I'm your host, Aaron Gold, and today we are diving into the sex stuff. We're doing BDSM today, and we've got two... BDSM enthusiasts and member of the members of the BDSM community. Uh, a first of all, a writer, improviser, and a sexuality educator that works at one of the top feminist-owned sex shops in the U.S. Sarah Marie Daney. Hi, really happy to be here. Thanks Wait, for having me, Aaron. I think I did just say your last name wrong. No, it was, it is right enough. It is right enough for me. Yes. Also <laughs> joining us is. An anonymous member of both the improv and BDSM community. They asked to remain anonymous, and we're going to try and disguise their voice as well. Uh, give it up for Logan. Hey, Aaron. Thanks hey. for having me. Hey, Logan. <laughs> I sound so mysterious the way you uh, set it up. It's true. He's also wearing a mask. Uh, <laughs> it has a zipper on the mouth, but yes. thankfully it's open. Well, it's a very dirty city, so I don't want any, <laughs> any particles from the street going into my face. <laughs> you got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. All right, guys, so why do you love the BDSM? Why do you love that BDSM? I'm wondering, could we possibly ask you to define for us what you think BDSM is? Yeah. That's fair. Uh, all right, well, I know that it stands for bondage sadomasochism, correct? It's yeah. Am I wrong Actually, already? It's... <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of confusion about um, what the acronym stands for because it's actually many letters and it's shortened. It's bondage and discipline. Uh, right. should, we, should we tag team it? Bondage and discipline. And sadomasochism is how I know it. <laughs> uh, also, bondage and discipline, um, domination and submission, right. sadism and masochism. Right. Oh, there's a difference between sadomasochism and then sadism and masochism, yes. but it encompasses all of those. Sadomasochism, I think, is a shorthand people use to um, describe, I think, everything that's maybe pain, quote-unquote, pain-related. Right. Um, but, I mean, technically, right, sadism and masochism, meaning enjoying, inflicting... Uh, intense sensations received as pain, enjoying receiving intense sensations received as pain. Okay, yeah, so we'll qualify BDSM as that. It involves pain or discomfort in sexual intercourse or, or any kind of sexual play. Does that sound fair? I mean, that is one type of tea. Or on purpose. On like on purpose uh, discomfort or, or, or pain, because I, I know that for some people it's just painful, but not like, I wouldn't, I'd say if you're like really tight and with someone who's really big, I wouldn't call that BDSM. I just call that uh, maybe work up to it. But like with BDSM, it's calling that need and lube. <laughs> exactly. So we call that. Although, I mean, needing as I think such a questionable word. Lube is great. Everyone uses lube all the time. The Definitely. end. All right. <laughs> Sorry, that's my lube interlude. <laughs> Your my interlube. Inter there we go. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that is definitely one one aspect of, of BDSM, I, I would quantify that it doesn't necessarily involve sexual intercourse, for sure. I, th I think that that is a component, um, and it's definitely uh, a, a couched in a, um erotic atmosphere. Mm. Um, but in my personal experience, BDSM often does not involve sexual intercourse at all. So... Does it does it involve any kind of sexual gratification? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, sexual gratification at times for sure, but I think that there are there's gratification you get just from sensation in a way. I mean, I've I've been in uh, some bondage scenes that maybe from the outset, if I described it, doesn't sound sexual at all, but was an intimate erotic situation where I had all my clothes on, mm -hmm. no one. No one touched any of my private parts, but it was insanely erotic. 
and insanely a turn on. So I think a lot of it is, is there's a huge mental component that I think huh. uh, uh, is often overlooked, you know, yeah. um, with the community. I think that um, one of the reasons I think BDSM is great, um, both as a, a practitioner and also as you know someone who loves talking about it, um, talking about it with people, is that it's this umbrella that can mean so many different things, that can mean so many different kinds of play, wherein we get to explore um, characters and aspects of our minds um, that are really taboo and really don't belong in everyday society and aren't appropriate, um, you know, when we're, you know, out and about in the world. We get to go into, like, what is essentially a theater space with our sexuality huh. and um, explore um, being things and people and having characteristics um, maybe parts of ourselves that are um, that we don't like very much, but we get to really like explore and play out in a way that is really charged and intimate. Um, you know and safe. And safe yeah. okay. and in control um, and negotiated. Um, so you know that's what I think is especially cool about BDSM. All right. Yeah, I, I really, really appreciate that you compared it to uh we use the word play and then also compared it to theater. Uh, Cause even on the way over here, I was actually looking up the definition for the word drama, the word acting, the word theater, mm. you know, and there's a spectacle involved in all three of those. And there's an interpersonal set of communication. I think that takes place if you're an actor in a play or if you're an improviser on stage, uh, there are, um, you know, characters and uh, status that you take on that you probably don't have in your real life. And, I know for me personally, or at least to that level of, of intensity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, think of any, I mean, think of any improv show that you've seen with some more maybe intense players, physical players that mm -hmm. we love mm -hmm. and enjoy watching, but you know, offstage are maybe a bit more subdued, uh, in their day-to-day -day life, you know? Yeah. Um, I actually think there's a lot of overplay or interplay, uh, maybe overlap is the word <laughs> I wanted to use, um, uh, between, the facets that sort of make up uh, taking on a character and living a character mm -hmm. in, th in the theater space and also taking on a character and living a fantasy and exploring that fantasy with another person, whether it's in your bedroom or in a play space in the BDSM community. So in a way it's, it's, it's an opportunity to really cut loose and, and just like really embrace the, I, I always get these confused, the id ego and super ego, but uh, embracing yeah. the id. Absolutely. Is that correct? Okay. Absolutely. Um, I think that also, and I just want to go back because you seem kind of like interested in this notion of like pain or intensity. Yeah. And I do want to make sure we touch on that as well. Oh, we're definitely touching on that because, <laughs> uh, okay, so everything that comes through here, every topic gets rated on a scale of zero to 10. Mm -hmm. Zero being ambivalence, take it or leave it, 10 being blood curdling hatred. Okay. BDSM clocks in for me at about a seven. Now, before mm -hmm. we. Like, don't don't misinterpret me as, like, shunning it or, or something like... I, I get that for some people, it's delightful and it's wonderful. And for them, more power to you. Like, I, I, I was in a Rocky Horror cast for four years, so I was exposed to a whole lot of different kinds of sexuality and uh, uh, people being very open about their stuff. Uh, I just learned a lot about what works for me. And for me personally, mm -hmm. I've been tied up. Uh, I've mm -hmm. been punched in the face. Oh boy! Uh, oh. And like, not crazy with your, I'm about sorry, it. With your permission? Yeah. No, the punch happened. The the punch happened uh, by surprise. Uh. Uh, During not in like a bar fight, right? During sex? No, no. She was on top of me, and then she punched me in the face, and that's I was like, not, "What?" And yeah. then she punched me in the face again. Oh no, that's that's, that's not, not cool. okay. Yeah. I'm very sorry that happened to yeah. you. It's okay. And then the next girl I was with, uh, I flinched when she tried to caress my cheek. Oh, and like, oh, uh, then somebody showed me the first episode of Californication, and that exact same scenario plays out. Wow. So I've got that with David Duchovny. Oh, <sighs> yeah, yeah. So I'm really sorry you went through that. Yeah, no, it's okay. That's terrible. Um, that's, that's never okay to, to do something like that to somebody without asking permission and negotiating first. And also having um, some training so that you don't accidentally, like, I mean, accidents happen, but like, 
a lot of, you know, what I, I talk about a lot of like, you know, like how to set boundaries, how to negotiate, how to find what you want. But I also talk with people like, how do you not kill each other accidentally? Yeah. You know, like, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm so sorry that happened. Oh, it's okay. I don't, it's not like I blame anybody. She got, uh, she was in the moment that was what she was into and we did not date for very much longer. Uh, so, you know, everybody learns. God, you're just a golden retriever. <laughs> Get that all the time. You're an Aaron Golden Retriever. Mm, there it is. <laughs> that is that is absolutely who I am. Uh, so to prepare for this, you guys sent me. If you you told me to watch Secretary, mm-hmm. uh, which I have in the past uh, with my mom. That cool. was weird. <laughs> uh, <Right>. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you also had me watch that Madonna erotica video uncensored mm-hmm. but the first thing i want to talk about is the other thing you sent me uh you sent me a uh, logan you sent me a photo album of shinbari now can you define what shinbari is so it's uh, it's shibari all right uh, i added an uh, n for no reason that's, that's totally <laughs> fine uh Shiba- a, we're shibarin today <laughs> shibarin. <laughs> yeah have you guys ever eaten at Shabaro's? Like, oh, it's, it's overrated. Only, only in airports. I was just about to say only in airports. <laughs> yeah. That's the only. Yeah, it's either that or what Aunt Annie's uh, pretzel thing. Oh or God! No. So, either way, you're getting it's an like... upset stomach. Um, <laughs> so, shibari is a, a Eastern Japanese form of rope bondage um, that is uh, differs from a more Western approach to rope bondage in that um, there are uh, uh, pieces within uh, the tying that the, the larger piece is made up of smaller pieces. I guess I could put it like that. So um, you, if you have tied someone, uh, whether they're suspended or whether they're just tied, say, in a hog tie or something like that, and you've used uh, a more Western technique, if someone, say, their wrists start hurting and you've they've been tied for 10 minutes or something like that, you probably will have to untie the entire... Um, apparatus to get uh, the ropes back off their wrists. Um, shibari uh, like allows for things like your wrists to be tied separately and then attached to the larger piece. Um, Is it all still with like one piece of rope? Or? No, there's multiple pieces of okay. rope. And even with, with Western techniques, there are multiple pieces of rope. But uh, you, you, without getting too technical, whenever you're tying, you're basically sort of looping rope back over itself so that you sort of form a bite. The same way that you form a loop, uh, on when you tie your shoes. Uh, huh. And so imagine with like a Western version, you would actually thread through that loop and then tie that and attach it onto other pieces. With Shibari, that loop is actually sort of the end of the rope that you tie around things and then you tie it on itself. So if, uh, like I said, if someone's foot is uncomfortable or if their you know arm is hurting, you're able to take a piece off pretty easily without having to unravel an entire tie. Um, it's also, I think, just a really beautiful art form. Yeah. Um, I will say those photos were the I, amazing art. Like, artistically, I really appreciated them, especially, like, there were a couple of them that looked like people were tied into kind of, like, rope trees. Yeah. Like, that That seemed really interesting. Yeah. Um, but the idea of me participating in that and, like, getting tied up and bound in that uncomfortable position, like, I... I I'd be like, did you get the picture? All right, great. Let me the fuck out. Like, yeah. it, it, it just seems uncomfortable. And you say you, you've you done that before, correct? Yeah. So I think when we, you know, you you initially asked us, like, what what we love about the BDSM community. Yes. And for me, it's rope. It is entirely rope. Mm. That is my biggest thing. I'm, I'm not hugely into pain. I have experimented with pain and, and will on occasion with the right partner. Mm-hmm. But I am... I am a, I'm a rope slut, if I can <laughs> say that. <laughs> I love rope. I love tying people. Uh, I love any opportunity I can get to bottom for rope, which is to be tied uh, in rope. Um, and I, I think even as a kid, you know, n- not to think that I was predisposed into, into being into BDSM, but, you know, when I was a kid, I used to play with He-Man action figures a lot. That was sort of like, I had G.I. Joe's, I had a lot of He-Man. He-Man action figures used to come with a little comic uh, that came with it. Yeah. And I remember, I don't remember which one I bought, but the one comic that came with the, um, the action figure had He-Man uh, tied in chains 
uh, and some guy pulling his hair back oh and about to strike him with a, with a mace. All right. uh, and I was probably eight or nine when I saw that. And <laughs> it's the first time I ever remember being aroused in my life mm. is looking at that image and, and being aroused, not because I was attracted to He-Man or whatever, but that I wanted to be He-Man. I well, we all to, want to be He-Man. Oh, of course we all want to be He-Man. Yeah. Even I yeah. sometimes want to be He-Man. Oh my God, know? Prince yeah. Adam had it figured out. Uh, too deep a He-Man reference. Uh, so when you are bottoming for, for that and you're tied up, what I would, how long, like when, when do you hit a point where you're just like, all right, that's enough. Yeah, Let so me out. Or like, I got shit to do. Like, do you just set a, a certain time for it or? Yeah. I mean, my, my entrance to BDSM, I went to a Q and a, uh, with people who are very experienced. And one of the first questions I asked was, how does the scene end? Yeah. Mm. You know, and That's he responded, question. yeah, he responded when you come. Um, but he was very like sort of joking <laughs> about that or whatever. I think it's, it's, it's really, you know, there's communication constantly between you and your partner, whether you are Absolutely. topping or bottoming. Um, so between the two of you, uh, you're going to sort of determine, you know, what that, um, what the ending is going to be for that scene. Uh, safe words are a real, real thing. Um, there Would are, you mind sharing your safe words? I don't have a set safe word. Uh, I typically will just, um, when I'm playing with someone, will just come up with something that's completely unrelated to the words no, stop it, you know, <laughs> anything like that that I may just scream in the moment. It's typically something like, you know, uh, kangaroo or something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll, I'll usually go with a multisyllabic word that... Um, <laughs> that is just unrelated to what we're doing. I'm sorry. I thought that was you were going to find that really exciting. Like we were going to be like you know like popcorn, Roosevelt. But uh, <laughs> those no. are great. They're great safe words though. Yeah. And please, audience listening at home, try them out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, try them it sounds like safe whatever word. is not kinky. Because if somebody just shouts out kangaroo during sex, I'm at worst going to be turned off, and at best going to be confused. Yeah, but seems like that's kind of the goal with a safe word. It does mean stop. Yeah, it's it's the word that means no stop. We need to check right. in. We need to find out what's going on. And um, you know, I think that there's this conception among people who maybe aren't super educated yet about BDSM who want to be that invoking a safe word is somehow a failure. Mm. Or an achievement mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that the goal is to make everything um, too much so that you're miserable, uh, and I it's like that's the thing we want to really like pay with how uh, play with how we can make uh, say misery exquisite. Um, <laughs> but uh, but we don't want to actually make ourselves or someone else truly yeah. miserable. Yeah, and there's a fine line sort of within yourself if you're bottoming um, of what is pain and discomfort in a scene versus what is legitimate, like, I'm actually going to injure myself. And I think yeah. some of that is experience. You know, you know, when you start feeling the pins and needles feeling, that that's mm -hmm. always a sign, like, uh, that we need to stop because yeah. you actually could have nerve pain. Uh, and just, just to cover it in case there's any listeners confused, uh, topping and bottoming. Topping is someone in control and bottoming is the person receiving all of this. Uh, yeah. let's say play. Yeah, exactly. Someone okay. who is relinquishing themselves. Gotcha. Yeah. Lower status. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, continue. <laughs> and we could get into status amongst topping and bottoming too. Cause there's yeah. things like oh, top, there's things like topping from the bottom, mm -hmm. which I'm oh, yeah. hugely into that as well. Me too. And everyone gives it so much shit, but it's yeah. awesome. No, I, I, I love, love a good power bottom. Like that's, <laughs> you can be a power bottom in a, a heterosexual no, I, I was going to say normal. I hope that, for lack that's, of a better That's also term, a phrase that, that has uh, no, numerous meanings. Yeah. And I, and I would hate to take away the word power bottom from the communities that use it. Yeah. Um, okay. But, uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your room. No, 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 please. Um, I, I just want to make sure... Um, I go over something that you mentioned, which Please. is which is this notion of panic once you're tied up. 
right? Mm -hmm. And I just want to go ahead and say that not everyone has to be into everything in order to enjoy BDSM. That's one of the great things about it is that what you could enjoy just could be, you know, like being called some like nasty words you don't like to be called in real life. And, um, you know, the sort of thrill you get out of um, being humiliated a little bit, or it could be um, really enjoying like giving somebody a spanking over your knee. And like, that's, you know, not like super intense, or it could be an incredibly um, scenario with lots of rope and, and intensity and um, physical intensity and all that kind of stuff. And it can involve genitals or it could not, but um, you can enjoy playing on multiple sides of these power games, or you could enjoy just one side. And it's okay if you like to um, tie someone up, but you don't like to be tied up. There's um, there's nothing wrong with wanting a one sided sort of experience. Yeah. I also want to point out, though, like it's your your example reminded me of a story from my own life of the very first time. I was restrained in any kind of way in a consensual, um, consensual relationship. Um, I was just kind of messing around with, uh, my girlfriend and she had some leather cuffs and I, I love leather. I love the way it feels. I love the way it smells. I think it's just a very sensual thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we tried, um, I'm kind of, you know, generally a top at heart, uh, but I was really curious about, um, being, you know, restrained or something like that. And this was like over 10 years ago. It's a really long time ago. And so she put the cuffs on my wrist and I started to have a panic attack. Really? And I, I freaked out. It just hit something inside me that, you know, really wasn't right for me at the time. Um, but now, um, I tend to enjoy sometimes being like tied up here and there and in particular ways. And it could have been, it could have been just my sort of my own notions of bodily and autonomy and control kind of playing into what was happening or it could not be. But, you know, if you're curious about, you know, playing with rope, but you don't feel comfortable with the idea of p- being tied up, maybe making yourself a sexy, fashionable rope harness that goes around your chest that someone can pull you by and kind of lead you around by and grab onto you with. That, right? that could be fun. Yeah. Right. So like that, just just like. Yeah, it can kind here. of, yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. As if it's like a tie and someone's just right. pulling you Right, except it's over all these different points in your body, so it's not going to be cutting into your skin in any sort of way. Right. Or, you know, for me, like, I don't really love my wrist being tied together in any, like, you know, particular way, but, like, you know, certain maybe positions, like, with, like, the arms like this, I'm not sure how to describe it for, uh, for like, your hands. It's almost as if your arms were folded across your chest, except they're behind your back. Right, yeah. So, um, you know, the sort of, like, physicality of what you get into there, the stretching of particular muscles that can, like, bring out from your subconscious, like, particular feelings and, like, feelings of, of relaxation and, um, feeling kind of, like, somebody else is in control and you can kind of relax. So it might be, if you're curious about exploring being restrained in some sort of way, it might be like getting into the muscle groups in your body, that stretch and relaxation yeah. that's going to that's gonna click with you yeah. right I'm, now. I'm glad you brought that up. I actually dated uh, someone for a while who was into this stuff, who, who really, she needed to be restrained and mm-hmm. she absolutely needed to be insulted. Um, All right. Good for her. Uh, great, great for her. <laughs> Wasn't great for us. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, not, you know, not I felt even, so yeah. awkward insulting yeah. her, and I and I get that it's like, you know, this is part of you know the the play of it. But like, I I don't feel comfortable calling someone who I'm dating a slut because mm-hmm. I'm yeah. like, I don't think that you're a sure. slut. Sure. Like, you know, we don't talk enough in general, but even with our partners, our yeah. partners that we've been with yeah. forever, we do not talk enough about what we want. And what we need, you know, Amen. and there are things like I'm, I'm married. There are things in my relationship with my wife that I'm places. I'm not willing to go like hard limits for myself mm-hmm. that are complete turn ons for my wife. And I want my wife to be happy. You know, we're at, we're at a position where she's the person I respect most in this world. And that feeling is very re- uh, reciprocated. Um, so we actually give each other the freedom to explore and participate in that sort of uh, desire, you know, that we each have. But I think, you know, it's unfortunate that even that happened in a way <laughs> that someone asked you to call them a slut because I think these are things that just should be talked about. As, 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 an, as a relationship gets intimate, I want to know, what are you into? What are you into, Aaron? Tell us, you know? 
because if you're if you're in a relationship if you're into someone you want you want to have a uh you want to give them as much pleasure as you can you're clearly enjoying spending yeah. time with them this is a way that you're communicating with that person absolutely and and that that relationship you know that person was wonderful and i i wish them all the best uh but it was very um it, it kind of uh, got my brain working about relationships in a way that mm-hmm. it hadn't before in that, you know, sexual chemistry is so important for long-term relationships. If one of you is super into one thing and the other person isn't, that is a major disconnect in a relationship. Uh, is there... But BDSM seems like it's such a, a, a wide a swath uh, uh, that, like, there's room for everyone to find some middle ground. But wh- uh, what were you just uh, going for? I was just mouthing an, a secret in the community that's not really a secret um, <laughs> to Logan. Um, Share the secret. This would be a great time to talk about the yes, no, maybe list, mm. which is a really excellent communication tool I recommend to everyone of any sort of proclivity. The yes, no, maybe list is sort of like a sex menu that you get to make. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can make it for yourself and you can share it with your partner. And the way it works is um, Google yes, no, maybe list. And you will get like pages and pages of pages yeah. of s- different sex acts there are, right? Different scenarios, different like names to call your genitals, whatever. It's just a huge list. And you take a piece of paper. Wait, and- names to call your genitals? Yeah. Like, like do you like pussy? Do you like cunt? Oh, right? right? Okay. You know, like All that right. kind of stuff. Um, I thought you meant like. Call it the destroyer. That Do would you like be the great. Destroyer? I am adding that to my yes, no, maybe list. <laughs> I want the destroyer on there. Okay. Um, what and and <laughs> if my partner's listening, yes to destroyer. No. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so uh, no, but um, so you take a piece of paper, you make three columns: yes, no, and maybe. And then you look instead of thinking about your relationship or anything, you just look at everything act by act and you say, how do I feel about this? Is this something I'm really excited about that turns me on, that I know I like, that maybe I've done before, I haven't done, but I'm really excited about it? It goes under yes. Is this something that is a hard limit for me? Really, there's no compromise. It's just something that I do not want to do. It goes in no. And then everything else goes in maybe. So it could be like, I'd be comfortable doing it, but I don't want to do it to you. I want to do it, but I want to learn more about it um Mm. i'm nervous about this but it also turns me on a little bit so i don't really (laughs) know um and then when you come together with your partner you talk about it act by act you don't say how many yeses do we have how many no's you do we have we say all right so i have spanking and i put that in my maybe column because of this and that uh where did you put spanking and it really lets you talk through act by act and this doesn't have to be just for bdsm this could be for oral sex this could be for um you know any other sort of like what we consider more vanilla acts this could be missionary position and you just get to talk through how you feel about it and it's a it's a great way to communicate about sexuality that doesn't put blame on people that makes it about how you feel about something right and just Um, puts it very easily out there for where you guys can sync up Exactly. And okay. so maybe if you, you know, do a yes, no, maybe list with if you have a new partner who really wants you to call them, you know, a dirty slut or something like that, you know, you can talk through it and maybe you could find some sort of compromise for now that you would feel comfortable with. Yeah. And the interesting thing that I find about a yes, no, maybe list is looking at your yes, so maybe list a year after you initially <laughs> fill it out yeah. and being like, wow, I was not into that. And now I freaking love that. You right. know, um, have there been maybe... hard no's that you guys changed or is it more of the maybe? Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. Has there been a hard no? That I, changed. I mean, the, the, hmm, this is more evolutionary, but the like notion of like being tied up really, you know, made me, made me literally panic and then like as I you know came to sort of trust someone more I got kind of more into it and also as I think as your life changes and as you evolve as a person what you may desire in like the realm of like sexual expression will change based on what you want to express do I think to partly how you're receiving the world that was kind of a garbage sentence no 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 no, you know what I mean I think you you touched upon something really important with trust in that like uh Oh, okay. For for instance, uh, for the longest time, I did not want my balls touched mm. at all. Like, mm. just Valid. ignore them. Don't touch them. <laughs> I'm very... Mm, uh, until I, I, I ended up dating somebody who I, I trusted a bit more. And then I was like, oh, okay, yeah. 
like I, I became a bit more amicable to it. So it seems like trust with that person is the, the gateway to trying more and more things. Would you say that's fair or? Yeah. I mean, look, the, the, the entire community is based on a foundation of consent and trust, hmm. um, which flows through uh, communication between um, consensual partners. And I, I think f- for me, the things that, the evolutions I've gone through uh, have been, you know, largely on, uh, with me just meeting more people, finding more friends mm-hmm. in the community, being exposed to things that when I see it on a piece of paper, I'm like, absolutely not. No, or like on the on the maybe scale, I'm like maybe a, um, you know, on a one to 10 scale, I'm like a two that I would maybe do it, you know? Gotcha. And then after seeing maybe uh, going to an event or a party, and seeing someone participate in that act and then be like, you know what? I might be more like a five. I mm-hmm. would try it once just to see. Right. Um, so I think there's trust in the community, trust in your partners, but there's also a sort of, this is going to sound stupid, but trust in yourself to be an open-minded individual that is constantly going through uh, evolutions on your way to sort of self-actualization. That doesn't you know? sound stupid yeah. at all. That sounds very spiritual when you put it that way yeah uh okay well so where does um pain discomfort kind of transfer into pleasure for you guys because mm. you mentioned uh logan you mentioned uh, uh being tied up and how like you oftentimes it doesn't even involve your genitals but you find it in, in, intensely erotic yeah can you can you guys go into detail about that yeah i mean um so I, uh, I think when you're playing with rope, uh, it can be as simple as, you know, having someone over or my wife, um, and she literally just takes her top off and then maybe still has a bra on. And then we just start playing with rope hmm. uh, and just sort of seeing where it, go- where it goes. It could be something else. It could be, we're going to both get into characters. We're going to put on costumes, literally. Uh, we're going to live out a fantasy, live out a plot, a storyline, and that storyline is going to involve a sort of damsel in distress moment. Mm. Um, and that, you know, if I'm topping, if I'm like topping her, topping someone else, that is a really big turn on for me. Um, but I think, you know, I, I have always had this fetish about small enclosed areas. When I was a kid, I used to basically take the sheet and I'd wrap the sheet all around me uh, <laughs> and like try to make myself like a little worm and stuff Aww. like that, you know? Um, I, would, I had all this junk like under my bed and I'd like move it to the side and then I'd crawl under my bed and then move it back so that I was just like hidden in a little corner. <laughs> I've always liked oh cubby God. holes. I've always liked little tiny spaces. Um, and I am claustrophobic. So, <laughs> so people are different. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. I, I am getting to the point where the subway is really freaking annoying me. But for the longest time, I didn't mind a packed, a packed subway train. In mm-hmm. fact, I kind of enjoyed a packed subway train because there's just, I'm like going to fit right inside here. And it's not like, I don't want to come across as a creep, but I'm like touching anyone. It's right. just literally like the fact of this sort of packed in set of bodies and I'm just sort of one of them. Um, that feeling of safety touches yeah. on that really early primal mind. Yeah. Like a snugness. Yeah. And so when you're feeling completely safe, I think your headspace is, uh, you know, you're, you're allowed to sort of, uh, um, you know, use your imagination. You know, your mind will go in multiple uh, uh, directions when you're feeling very safe and very soothed and very at ease. And one of those is eroticism for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it is, I think it, it depends on who I'm playing with. Clearly there is a erotic um connection with my with who i'm playing with it may be someone that i'm very physically attracted to uh mentally very attracted to or it could be someone who's more of an acquaintance who's a friend and we have uh consensual trust amongst the two of us of what we're going to do in this situation but it's not going to involve anything sort of like in the sexual realm this is more of something like someone who wants to experience rope and i love any any opportunity i can get to tie someone i'm going to do it so yeah i'll i'll go down that journey with you um so i think it, it's really um, it, you know, it has a lot to do with who you're playing with. Did I answer your question? Kind of, yeah. Um, but now I've got more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rabbit hole. Yeah, no, we're definitely uh, heading down the rabbit hole That would hole be a here. cool BDSM club name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would hole. be. 
Uh, I recommend you both open it. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting carrot. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> That's your line. That is your line here. All right. Uh, so you mentioned uh, all multiple people. So uh, do you have an open relationship with your wife? So we have no. Or is it like on certain things? Like, is it okay if you were to tie up another woman? But if you had sex with her, that would be the line. Like, yeah. So I mean, things related to intercourse are uh, we communicate about that okay. before we play with anyone else. Um, and within our uh, sort of understanding, you know, we're open to playing with other people. Uh, we kind of draw the line at intercourse. Hmm. Anything beyond that, we actually we kind of want to meet the other person. Um, to be honest, I think in the, the traditional sense of an open relationship, uh, I guess we do have an open relationship in that we, we have had sex with other partners, Mm -hmm. but it's not as like a matter of course. It's not like, you know, I'm going out tonight, going to fuck someone or whatever. It's not as blase as that, you know, um, you know, our, everyone sort of has a line and our line is like sort of right at intercourse. And then we other, ha- we have other things that are just sort of sacrosanct, like our bedroom. We don't play in our bedroom with a third person when we're both not present. So I wouldn't, if my, if my wife's I out. I think you're about to say me, when we have a perfectly usable couch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, or kitchen. Um, yeah. If, if my wife is out of town, I'm not going to invite someone over and use my bedroom as a, as a, um, as a play space. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so I think, yeah, I think it's different for everyone else, but for me and for us, you know, um, you know, we, we give each other the freedom to fulfill desires that we can't directly fulfill for each other. And it honestly makes our relationship stronger because there is no resentment. I have no resentment for her. There are things I want her to do to me and she will not do them because she's, you know, she's a very submissive person. I'm, I'm a switch. I like to top, but in, in a lot of situations, I like to bottom as well. And she's, uh, she's just unable to fulfill that sort of uh, dominant position. So, you know, I don't, uh, the worst thing would be for us to end up in a situation where we're resentful for each other because we won't provide these things that are honestly hard limits for each other. Um, you know, we give each other that respect to say, I love you. I respect you. This foundation is the most important thing to my to to me and to us i just want to go off on this branch and just sort of explore what it's like to bottom for rope um because i enjoy it you know and then i'm coming right back to her so that's beautiful (laughs) yes um i want i'm thinking about you you brought up pain and discomfort and i want to just make sure that we go back to that because that seems like a point of fascination for you yeah no that's my major sticking point yeah. like okay. uh that I, i've been restrained a few times mm-hmm. um most of the time i didn't like it but uh, there have been a few times i was into it mm-hmm. uh and i think that did that did seem to be uh tied to how much i trusted them like sure yeah and uh, uh I'll, I'll never forget one of the oddest experiences i i've had was uh there was a girl i was hooking up with and I mentioned, and it was right around Halloween, and I had gone as, uh, uh, you know those ridiculous horse heads? Those those masks? Yeah. Yes. They're just mm-hmm. like kind of the horse look shock. Yes. I threw that on a Thor costume as when, and went as Thor, uh, the horse beautiful. god of thunder. <laughs> yeah. A lot of me going, I, I say the nay. But uh, she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. You should come over in that costume. So I did, and you know, we had a laugh. I took it, uh, the horse mask off, and then we start to mess around, and she just goes, get the horse mask. Uh, cool. Wow. And then she handcuffed me and put the horse mask on me and she was having the time of her life. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, underneath all that ridiculous horse mask, I'm just thinking, can I take this off? Yeah, like, it, it was, because I, it's the, the zaniest horse mask. Look at that thing. It's just, it, its mouth is agape. There, and she, and when I said, can we remove the mask? She goes, aw. <laughs> So, like, all of that was incredibly uncomfortable for me, though I realized, kind of funny. Uh, so, yeah, like, restrain and pain, and that's my roundabout way of, of, of getting to, like, pain, aside from, you know, maybe, like, a little bit of force, is not uh, happy. Like, I don't like being insulted 
while I'm already at my most vulnerable having sex, you right. know? Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting because um, we're putting a lot of things in the same sentence, right? Like basically, essentially emotional pain and, yeah. and physical pain and also discomfort. Yeah. And I would say that these are three different things. If you like slam your finger in a car door <laughs> and um, you enjoy like, you know, being flogged, Generally What's speaking, flogging? oh, good question. <laughs> um, a flogger um, is sort of, um, oh God, it's. I'm sorry. I wish that there was some sort of visual that I yeah. could just illustrate with. But um, I, well, I, for, I, for the listeners at yeah. home, but Google also it. for Aaron, but, uh, a Google flogger. Um, so um, has um, <laughs> many what are called falls, or sort of like strips of leather bound together that you can do kind of like a sensual like swishing um, and like tapping against the body to create kind of a like a sensual. Um, oh. experience and you can go harder and do what I think people um, sometimes call like whipping they think of it as whipping but it's actually using a flogger yeah. like against somebody's ass or against somebody's thighs or um, there's a particular section of the back that is safe to flog right. uh, so wait uh, uh, Logan here yes Logan that's a beautiful uh, one too yeah sent me is showing me a picture of a, a purple and black Flogger, the the handle of which looks like a dildo. It is a dildo, uh, and Why then not? like yeah. the love a two in one, you know. Yeah, multi- the rest, multitasking. Yeah. This multitasking. almost looks like a cat of nine tails, except with many more than nine. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. What is that nylon? You can make floggers out of all sorts of things, and it's going to create a different sensation. With simple things around the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's your next podcast. <laughs> Sex toys out of household items. Um, yeah. Did you uh, know bleach isn't always bad? <laughs> oh, God, right. oh, we didn't say that. We did not say that. <laughs> okay. That's your line. Um, but uh, but a fl- like basically what I think people call whipping, and not not to be confused with a, an Indiana Jones sort of single tail whip. That's like a that's its whole other category. That but, would leave welts. Yeah, and it takes yeah. a lot of training to use those. It takes some training to use a flogger, and certainly practice. And you need to know where is safe to contact the body with force, and where it is not safe to contact the body with force. Spoiler alert: a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, that said, um, so any sort of what we call impact play, right, where there is impact with um, a tool or a body part against another body part. So like a spanking with a hand, a paddle, a hairbrush, um, a whisk, a spatula. That is all considered a impact whisk. play. A whisk. Mm-hmm. A whisk would do it? Like, yeah, I, I mean, just... why not? I mean, be careful. It's it's metal. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, just... lots of... <laughs> hey, folks, look around your kitchen and see yeah. what might be yeah. nice to whack against your ass. Mm-hmm. Like if you're sitting, if you're at home and you're just uh, like walking around watching Netflix, like pick up different things and like thwack them against your butt. You oh, might like how it feels. You'll never look at Sur Table the same no, way again. No, that uh, I is a sex that store. <laughs> oh, it's a sex store. Gotcha. No, it's a kitchen it's store. It's a kitchen oh. store. <laughs> 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 We're going to get sued. But the <laughs> point is... Don't be silly. Uh, I'm going to get sued. You guys will be fine. <laughs> the, the point is... Um, uh, so if we're talking about impact play, um, I'm trying to, <laughs> I started this sentence so long ago. We went on kind of a journey there. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I don't get you totally off track. No, please. So if you if um, you know you're thinking about impact play, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're into like accidentally slamming your car in a door because it's very very your car in a door. Oh fuck! Can we cut that? <laughs> nope. Keep uh, going. Shit. All right. Slamming your your hand in a car door. Um, because what you're playing with is building an intensity of sensation that reaches a threshold that may or may not be defined as your conscious mind as pain. Mm. And especially mm. when you're in a state of really heightened arousal, that threshold moves up. And it can feel like um, a sense of like extreme intensity that you may read and like perceive as an experience that is pain or it may read or perceive as an experience that is intensity that is extremely pleasurable. Some people do genuinely enjoy the discomfort and that is eroticized to them. And that to go back to the notion of like tying to different like spaces in our mind that can tie to like a, a space in your mind where like, you know, you're a warrior of sorts and like taking on like all of this intensity and holding it in your body and withstanding it, um, that could mean um, that you are the most um, 
like exquisite butler that Winchester Manor ever had and taking your spanking as you serve this tea is like um, you are accomplishing something really intense and wonderful. Um, it could be that you just love the sensation of kind of going beyond what you think a limit might be. Like all of these are different ways people can experience notions of pain that can be really pleasurable to them. But it is in this sort of controlled environment. And it is often, but not always, often tied to these sort of like spaces in your mind of like how you feel and how it makes you feel to withstand intense sensations. So if I'm getting this right, it doesn't always register as pain. Yeah, it's, it's not the same. You know, somebody who might be like receiving a really hard spanking with a hairbrush, and mm -hmm. those hurt, will, um, you know, not feel the same about it in this erotic context as, you know, like if, you know, somebody bumps into them, shoves them really hard, and, it's, and you know, it's a surprise and it's unpleasant. Yeah, Th that was really well said. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> uh, okay, well, since we're, 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 we're winding down, what would you say to somebody to try and get them into BDSM? Because it sounds like it's something that's either you're into or you're not, but uh, uh, since this is about me trying to like these things for me personally... <laughs> Uh, as a window for the audience, how would you get someone into this stuff? Well, awaken it in me. <laughs> <laughs> Awake the dragon. I mean, it's it Logan. is already awoken in you. Mm. You go to Comic Con and you dress up all the time. Oh yeah, you, Aaron, you're filthy. You do, <laughs> <laughs> you do improv comedy. Yes. Oh. And yeah, we well, had a great conversation over email about improv and BDSM's yeah. overlap. Which Wait, could, what? What? Which could, yeah, oh, absolutely. So we talk about in improv all the time, like, I really like that person. They're a great person to play with. I loved playing with that person. It was a great time. It was a great scene. I loved being in that scene and playing with that person. It's the same nomenclature we use in BDSM. And, the huh. like, think of the most fulfilling improv show you've ever done. The, the show that, that worked, every, every moment worked. Mm -hmm. Every moment was great. And you come off stage and you just want to stay in a bear hug with all your other teammates when it's over. That's aftercare, which we didn't really t get touched too yeah. much on. Yeah, it's um, when you kind of soothe each other after yeah. the scene and come back into the real world, which is yeah. very important. That is, at the end of a great scene, a rope bondage scene, for example, that is a very similar feeling that I get. Uh, the, the space that my head takes is just pure, pure pleasure. And, and just so grateful mm. that I got to go through that. And that I got to go through this with you. You know, we went through it together. And I hope you had as great of an experience as I did because it was life altering in some way, you know? And I feel like when you think about the BDSM is literally just about the orgasm and fucking someone, it is it's really undercutting what the entire experience can be, you know? Um, yeah. For a lot of people, it's very spiritual. Yeah, absolutely. Not I've, for everyone. It's okay if it's not, right? But it's, it's great if it is. But for us with some people, sex is like a drum roll leading up to a big cymbal crash. Right. Yeah. It's, or a rim shot. I mean, <laughs> how it goes. Uh, <laughs> but I would, I would say for someone who's interested, I would begin by maybe on your own or with your partner, have you talked with your partner about the things that you're into? Have you told your partner the things that you want from them or mm. that you want to uh, experience together? And On what some you level. love experiencing too. Yeah, absolutely. What you love, which yeah. sometimes I think people don't tell each other. Yeah, what was that thing that your partner maybe did in an erotic situation uh, that you're almost embarrassed to talk about again? Allow that, whatever that feeling is, whether it's, I don't know, shame or anything, just let that go and go back to that moment and mm -hmm. talk about that moment and, and sort of focus in on what it was that brought you such pleasure yeah. um, and then see where that leads. Hmm. Um, I think very practically I could say that there's, there are avenues where you can just, uh, there's a lot of Q and a um, helpful tutorials around the city. Um, I mean, Sarah Marie might be able to even know of more avenues than, than I do or whatever, but that's how I got started. My, my wife was actually already fairly involved in the, in the community. And I, when I came out as a kingster, I um, uh, found um, 
an event that was just q and a it was like kink for beginners or something like that and it was literally just in a rehearsal studio and it was just a whiteboard and they passed around a yes no maybe uh uh printout that had like 200 things on it uh and it was just asking questions about uh the community but also specifically about like that that q a was about role play so people were there specifically asking about role play i was like how does the scene start and end you know, like, do I have to hit someone or right. get hit? Because I don't know if I want to do that, you know, and you don't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's anything I learned from that is that everyone is drinking a different cup of tea. Um, yeah, it's all about your own personal comfort level and how that matches up with whoever you're uh, involved with. Yeah. yeah. In that moment. Okay. I would say, too, that, um, like, to go back into, like, the improv um, and BDSM overlap and how this might also relate to things that you're already familiar with is um, I, I remember a lot of stuff clicking for me um, in improv reading the new topping book and the new bottoming book. Um, those are great books about not like, how do you tie someone up safely? How do you spank someone? But it's how do you get into what part of your mind you want to explore? What's exciting to you? How do you make structure around a scene? How do you set limits? What is your responsibility in a scene as a top or as a bottom? Um, how do you communicate with people? All that kind of stuff. And it sort of laid out for me in a way I hadn't thought about before. What does it mean to be a top or be a bottom? And what are all the different types of tops and bottoms you can mean? And I became kind of fixated on this notion of like different kinds of tops and bottoms, especially bottoms who want to serve versus bottoms who want to be kind of like a vessel mm-hmm. who are filled with meaning. And the service thing really stuck with me partly because of thinking about scenes I'm doing. And even if I'm playing a high status character, serving my partner in a scene, making the scene about fulfilling them and how that reflects back to also fulfill me and thinking about different kinds of tops and um, how there are tops who like, you know, demand things like I think it's okay like you want to take care of your scene partner when you're on stage but like if you are having a moment of need it's okay to be needy and they can be needy back at you later on in the scene or in another scene so that sort of like give and take of like care and direction and you know structure to give um to give space for someone else to explore something awesome while connecting with you, while you're exploring something awesome in yourself, that is a metaphor for improv if I've mm. ever thought of one. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I guess b- the idea of BDSM is pretty much rooted in that idea of yes and. Yeah. It's try new things while still, you know, feeling safe enough to try those things. Yeah. Huh. So, I mean, I think those, I mean, those are books, I, I think they're pretty terrific. I recommend you read them. They're written by these hippie therapists who have been doing sex, <laughs> sex education since the 70s, and there are a lot of nature hippie metaphors. therapists that have been <laughs> doing sex education. That about, that is as left as you can possibly there's just, be. There's so many nature metaphors, and there's poems. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, but yeah, so if you're thinking about, like, I also wanted you to see the erotica video, not because I thought it was like this end all be all of like what BDSM is. But there, I remember watching that video and seeing particular images in it and sort of having this moment of like, oh, hello, what is that weird thing that mm-hmm. made me feel a feeling just now? Um, and so I was sort of curious to get your take of like, did you have those moments with that? Or is there anything that um, you may consume in media or read in erotica or see in a movie that touches on something that's like Logan's early He-Man moment <laughs> of, of like, oh, what was that? And why am I feeling this feeling? This is kind of weird. Well, well, what is that about? With the erotica video, most of my thought was, oh, man, this is very 80s. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, especially just like the movement, the dancing of it. There was one moment, and like, I've, I, I'm not crazy about Madonna. I don't, I don't dislike her. I just don't care. Okay, uh, that's fair. But there was one moment where she, she, you know, she, they keep cutting back to her uh, with a cattle prod, and she's like on this platform that's like turning her around. It's or a, not riding a, cattle prod, a riding crop. Yeah. Riding crop. My mistake. A riding crop. Two very different levels very of different experience things. required yeah. to wield <laughs> yes. those two things. They're both uh, often used yes. in yeah. the BDS community. Yeah. yeah. Very different uh, results. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, with the riding crop, at one point she has it up, and then she kind of just bites it. Mm. And that was a little, ooh. 
Like that, okay. that I thought was, was hot. Um, most of it didn't really do it for me. I was just like, yep, it's an art. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that bite for some reason that did it. Yeah. All right. We'll make that the fun and follow the fun. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about the bite? You know, mm. just follow that, that road and see just start it biting right. things. <laughs> like, All right. Um, yeah. Think about that sort of like, like oral fixation, either notions of biting or being bitten. Like, what does it mean to you in on some level to have something in your mouth and be engaging with it in your mouth or to have a part of your body in someone else's mouth? We're opening up a lot of doors here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I've got some things to think about on my own time. All right. Uh, this has been really interesting. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I I think you guys were had a, a a great path of defining that what BDSM is, and in that realizing that it's not so easy to define. It is such an open thing. It isn't just about pain and discomfort. It has so many more layers to it than that. And the idea that that pain can register as something else, given the mo- mood and moment, is is really interesting to me. All right. So if we started out as a seven. It's, it, this one was really hard for me to put numbers on because, like, I, it, it, it's not something that has ever like made me go like, "Ew, I hate BDSM." It's more of just like, mm, not for me. Mm-hmm. But in in these broader definitions, I could see certain things working. I, I'm going to have to make one of those yes/no maybe lists and uh, explore from there. Um, I kind of don't really have a number because it's it like I, I i don't think i'd ever really want to be tied up like a shibari but like i i would love to download one of those lists and just see so yeah maybe, see what's on there yeah maybe we're not maybe we're off the scale maybe i'm i'm just i'm not i wouldn't say i like bdsm but i'm open to seeing where I land on it. So maybe we're at a zero. Maybe we're at, honestly, it feels like a little more positive than that. Maybe you guys got me to like BDSM or at least to, to embrace it a little bit more than that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, high five. Do we win like a prize? Um, I mean, being on the podcast is, is of course its own prize, but like, is there a car? Oh, I feel like I was just (laughs) buttered up a little bit. I feel like that was the opposite of BDSM just there. And that I just felt very stroked in the ego. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I, well, I want to be a gracious guest, but, um, but seriously though, Aaron, is there like a car or something that we want to be? I I can't afford it. Like a Miata Uh, or something. You, yeah. I would spank both of you. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're not happy about that, then I don't know what else to you offer know that, you. That's something that we'll talk about. Yeah. You know, okay. it's something yeah. we'll negotiate. We'll see. Yeah. we'll see. I've got big hands. They're very good at, at I'm assuming that. Yeah. All right. And that conversation there. <laughs> uh, Sarah Marie, do you have anything that you'd like to plug? Um, well, uh, I, mm, I am currently doing improv at um, the Armory at the Tank Theater. Um, uh, we are actually between uh, seasons right now. I, uh, my team, Definitely Humans, I don't know if we're going to be renewed. <laughs> Definitely Humans, Definitely such humans. a great name. I don't know if we're going to be renewed. I don't know if I will be on it. If the team is renewed, It's life is a mystery. But it's a wonderful community, and they do great shows. Um, at the Tank Theater in, in uh, Midtown every... In New York City. In New York City every Friday night um, at 9.30. Um, and it's a really warm, awesome group of people doing like really cool shows. So I encourage everybody to check out the Armory on Facebook and keep an eye out for the new season of Tank Shows. Wonderful. Uh, uh, do you have like a Twitter or Instagram or anything like that or any of your writing online that people can check out? If uh, not, that's totally cool. <laughs> just Just... But I kind of went off Twitter for a little bit. Maybe I'll go back on it. Sure. Uh, I was on Twitter a little bit um, a while ago as my burlesque alter ego, Lady Killer. Good name. And thank you. And it's, uh, yeah, L A D Y K I 113 R. Logan, he said in quotes. Uh, since you're anonymous, do you have anything that you would like to plug? If not, I, I'll totally fine. Plug my Fat Life account. Yeah. So we, didn't, we didn't get into Fat Life, but Fat Life is the Facebook 
for kinksters. Okay. So it is a social media platform that has a timeline where you post updates, has events, friends, really much more interesting photos than Facebook, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if I, you if you reveal your username, will your picture come up? I like, will think, people see? Well, no. The, the default uh, profile photo is not me, and I don't think there's a photo where you can see my face. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but I okay. will check tonight. Uh, I am Paperboy Delivers on uh, on FetLife. So, if uh, the listening audience, I bet there's some people on FetLife out there. Uh, friend me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or send me a message. Uh, well, wonderful. Um, so, uh, in terms of me plugging things, I think December 18th will have probably already come and gone before this episode airs, but in case it hasn't, uh, the uh, myself and several other improvisers are dressing up as the Avengers and doing an, uh, an improv show as the Avengers for an Avengers Christmas special. Uh, oh God, that's like so many sex role plays. Like in one. <laughs> no, I'm playing Thor, and uh, we're also uh, joining With a horse us mask. <laughs> without the horse mask. Yeah. I was gonna say, like everybody who writes sketch out there, get out all your props because, like, they are now all sex toys. <laughs> like all of your dumb, like fucking costumes and like fake trees you've made and just stupid bullshit. You can. Have sex with all of those things. You can spank someone with anything. Uh, I'm assuming. It got silent, so I feel like I crossed a line. For safety's could... sake, I'm like thinking through. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> thinking through. Uh, but anyway, that that show is uh, December 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, at the Magnet Theater in New York City. Also, uh, I'd, as always, like to plug the show that Grant, our producer, and I run together last Friday of every month, including uh, we're doing an end-of-the-year one Friday, December 30th at 7 p.m. You Are Not Alone, an uplifting show about depression. This is also at the Magnet Theater. Uh, you can follow this podcast at Don't Mind Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. If you want to email us, email us at don'tmindpodcast at gmail.com. We're always looking for more experts and stuff. Uh, if you just like me... You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that at, hey, it's Aaron Gold. Uh, He's very nice. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Follow him. Aww. He's very funny. Well, you're saying that like I'm holding you hostage. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing awkwardly like I'm holding you hostage. All right, well, uh, one last thing we like to do on this show is if you leave us a review on iTunes, I'll read your name along with something that I like about you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a sweet deal. Uh, do poop. Uh, I like that you are into sc- uh, scatology, but uh, you're very positive about it. Freckly Soprano One. Uh, I like that. Uh, uh, whereas uh, there might be other Sopranos, there might be a Freckly Soprano, but you got them beat mm-hmm. in rank. Uh, and Hawk Guy Three Sixteen. I like that you're an archer, but a lot more casual about it. And you're also, uh, you've got a, a stone cold stunner arrow. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening to uh, this podcast. We'll see you next week. And as always, keep on minding.